Experts estimate that 37 million people in the United States suffer from chronic sinusitis. That's more than are affected by arthritis or hypertension. In terms of impact on quality of life, having chronic sinusitis can be worse than diabetes or chronic heart failure. Michelle Gerhardt knew she had chronic sinusitis. I was waking up congested every morning, um, so it took a while before I could really breathe. Um, I think the other thing was around the cold and flu season, I would end up with a major sinus infection, which would knock me down for a good two weeks at least. Some people don't know they have chronic sinusitis. All they know is life is uncomfortable with facial pain and pressure, congestion, post-nasal drainage, and maybe headache, fever, fatigue, and cough, not to mention halitosis. The culprit? Eight cavities in the human skull called sinuses. Dr. Jordan Pritikin explains. We used to think of them as passive filters that did nothing more than remove dust and dirt and viral and bacterial particles from the air that we breathe in. But we now recognize that the sinuses have an active role in our overall health. They act as reservoirs for a compound called nitric oxide. And this compound is incorporated into the air that we breathe. In every breath, it uh, uh, enters the lungs and dilates small blood vessels. It has a role as an antibacterial agent. It also has an antifungal property. And so we want to maintain that reservoir function of the sinuses when we treat sinus disease so that we don't lose this important function uh, of the sinuses. Small passageways, called ostea, connect each sinus to the nasal cavity. If these ostea become obstructed, say by allergy or a cold, then the mucus, which normally drains from the sinuses into the nasal cavity, is blocked. The result? Inflammation of the sinus and all of the symptoms we talked about. Everyone gets a bout of sinusitis now and then, but some people suffer much more often. Joshua Houston is one of them. You'd have this feeling in your face and in your, in your temple, it was like your head was in a vice. It was just very, you know, uncomfortable. You can't breathe, uh, can't eat properly. Even sleeping is, is difficult because you can't breathe properly. There are two types of sinusitis, acute and chronic. Sinusitis that lasts for more than eight to 12 weeks or that keeps coming back is chronic. According to doctors, a whole host of factors contribute to chronic sinusitis. Anatomical factors, such as a deviated septum, narrow ostea, and nasal polyps. Conditions in the patient, such as allergies or asthma. Environmental factors like exposure to pollution, dust, mold, or cigarette smoke. And then there are the causes of the inflammation itself bacteria, viruses, and mold. Diagnosis of chronic sinusitis must be done carefully. The diagnostic process begins with a thorough history. We want to know what contributory factors may be present. We want to know about duration of symptoms. We want to know how people have responded to medical therapy in the past. Examination is also important. Once the doctor diagnoses chronic sinusitis, treatment options include medical therapies like antibiotics, or interventions to remove the obstructions to sinus drainage. Each has its advantages and disadvantages. In terms of treatment, we have two broad categories available to us. We have medical therapy and we have surgery. Medical therapy includes decongestants, antihistamines, uh, nasal sprays, nasal irrigation, antibiotics when appropriate. The advantage of medical therapy is that it's reasonably safe, it's reasonably effective, and it can be used for a long period of time. The disadvantage of medical therapy, though, is that it may not provide complete relief. Surgery, as an alternative, has the potential to be a curative uh, option. The disadvantage of surgery, though, is that it's a more invasive option. It's a trip to the operating room. There's recovery time. There are risks with surgery that you don't have with medical therapy. Traditional sinus surgery has used cutting and grasping instruments, which also increase the risk of damage to the tissues. So now we have available to us an alternative a balloon system that allows us to enlarge the sinus openings with minimal trauma, improving airflow, improving drainage, and minimizing risks to the patient. The best course of treatment depends, of course, on the nature of the disease in the patient and on the physician's best judgment. 
but for the millions of sufferers of chronic sinusitis in the United States. The best advice we can offer is to be informed when you discuss the topic with your primary care physician or your ear, nose, and throat specialist.